I'm about 10 miles east of Edinburgh in Trenent, which used to be an important mining town. Its original ancient name was Travenent. Trav meaning village and Nent meaning valley. So it's the village in the valley. But has the property market round here also bottomed out? I'm here to look at a lot guided at just 55,000. So what does £55,000 buy you in property terms? A garage? Plot of land? A dilapidated house, perhaps? Well, here in Trenant, about nine miles outside Edinburgh, it could buy you this, an old chapel. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get mad. Built in 1870, this old Methodist chapel was a place of worship for over a hundred years. But in recent years, it's been used as an antique showroom, amongst other things. So, what's next for it, I wonder? So, is it going to be a hallelujah moment as you walk through the door, or an oh, core blimey one? Um, well, kind of half and half. Um, quite an in interesting entrance. Sort of an anteroom there, another one there with a bit of kitchen stuff going on. And then through to what is hopefully the main part of the building. And yes! That's more like it. Really good sized space, high ceilings, beautiful old floorboards. Now I'm getting excited. This is fantastic. Not only is there a large open hall this side, next to it there's an equally large space where the congregation sat for the service, complete with pews and pulpit. The single-storey stone building was subdivided in 1958 to create the church hall. But it's a chapel that may not be here for very much longer because planning permission has been passed to demolish it. The planning is for four flats with parking. Well, I can see the financial side of it, I guess, but it always makes me feel sad when a place like this looks like it's going to go. It's not so much what's inside that I'm attracted to, it's the fabric and design of the place. It's the windows, the high ceiling, the brick and the history that will be bulldozed away. So is this really the end for the chapel? What does the auctioneer who sold it think? The planning consent that the building has is for the redevelopment of the property to form four flats, two bedrooms each. There is a condition within the consent for the uh, developers to use the stone or reuse the stone of the building and the surrounding walls. At least a small part of the building would be retained, even if it's just the stone. But is this really the best option for the chapel? I think it would be a bit of a shame because I think there's still life in this building. Um, and certainly in the current post-credit crunch environment, there's a good opportunity for the building to be brought back into beneficial use. I don't necessarily think that redevelopment for residential is the way forward with this particular property. It may not be the local community's favoured outcome, but what about financially? We've had a look at rental levels and having sold quite a few flats in Trenent over the last few months, we're aware that the one-bed flat is probably commanding a rental of about £340 a month and two bed, perhaps £400 per calendar month. Um, if we were looking to sell flats at that level, it's going to be somewhere between about 100 and 120, depending on what they comprised. Four flats would bring in a return of £400,000 from a building that was guided at just £55,000. Even with development costs, there's likely to be a healthy profit margin going down that route. There is the emotional side of knocking down a beautiful old building like this. Still, it will be up to whoever bought it when it went under the hammer. Right, Lot 29, Bridge Street, Trenent. The Trenent Primitive Methodist Chapel, built in 1870. Very handsome building. What are we going to say for that? Somebody start me off at £60,000? 60. 61. Gentleman down here at £60,000. I'm going to sell at £60,000. £60,000. Gentleman down here, 61, 61, 62, 63. 63, 63, 64, 65. 65, 66, 67, 67, 68, 69, 
70, one. I think you might have done him now. At 70,000 pounds, going once, twice, third and final time. We all done 70,000 pounds. Gentlemen, started me, finished me. You deserve it, sir. Thank you very much. So, for £70,000, the man who's bought himself a chapel is Alex. He saw this as a heaven-sent opportunity to pursue a long-held dream. Alex, congratulations. Uh -huh. You got yourself a church. Yeah, I'll have that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you want to buy it? Well, originally I wanted to buy it because uh, I've always had a dream of owning a boxing club. A boxing club? Yeah, a boxing club. Right. Amateur boxing, as I used to box myself. And I've always been looking for a, a premises that I could buy and own my own boxing club and bring lads off the street and bring them up and make them into champions. Wow. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You must have been delighted when you found it. Well, to be honest, I've been watching for it for the last three years because I only live along the road there. I'm two doors away from here. Oh, really? Yeah, and when the man had his antiques and that in here, I approached him and he wouldn't let me know who had actually owned the building. And I can remember saying to an old man called Hamish that used to run the Haddington Boxing Club up the road, I'll have that church as a boxing club one day. He so says, no chance. And then I met him at a boxing show just after I'd purchased it. He says, I can't believe you managed it. That's great news. Not only will the chapel building remain, but it will become a community space again, a place for hopes and dreams. So, why boxing? Talk, talk me through it again. Tell me a bit well, about I you. Boxed, and... well, well, I started boxing at 11 year old. Um, I boxed till I was 15, and unfortunately, I developed tuberculosis. Oh, so, no. I had to stop boxing. Um, so, I threw myself into business. So, I'm a sort of, I own a carpet and furniture shop now, uh, and I've owned various businesses and done little developments and that. And I went back to the boxing at 20 because now that I had got my business off the ground, I wanted another wee. Uh, stab at the boxing sort of side of things and I also noticed the difference it makes to young lads' lives. When I was in trouble when I was young, my dad would say, oh no, <laughs> didn't he want to know, they get embarrassed and... But when I was at the boxing, they were proud and they were there. It's not, he's not mine, it's that lad over there's my son. So that's my real reason for getting into this. What have you done today to make you feel proud? Alex might see this as the perfect place to fight the good fight, but he will need to get change of use first. Then he can start altering the altar. So, let's talk about the building then. How are you going to turn this into a boxing academy? Right. First of all, the big wall along the middle comes away. We'll put the male dressing room through at the back there, and we'll put the female dressing room through here where the toilets already are and the kitchen is. So it's going to be me it's only boys and girls? Oh, it's mixed. Oh, it's okay. definitely mixed. Oh, there's no problem about mixing it at all. Most boxing clubs nowadays are mixed. Um, the boxing ring will go over here on the left-hand side. Um, th there'll be mirrors all the way around because all boxers like to see their cell. <laughs> and have, when they're shadow boxing and that, the big thing is mirrors. And when you're teaching a kid to box, the best way to teach them is to let them see what he's actually doing. Uh, we'll have all the sort of punching bags and things over there, and then we'll have, like, a CV area in the other corner. So what about sort of cost for, for getting it sorted? Well, right off the top of my head, to get this up and running, it's going to cost me 27 grand. So that £27,000 on top of the 70000 you paid to ah. buy it, so you've almost got £100,000 in this. Ah, that's right. Uh, and financially, does it bring anything back to you? No, right away, it's not going to... It's, it's only really always been a, a love in my life and, and a hobby that I've always wanted to do when I retire for work. It's not an investment that I've made thinking I've just threw that money down the cyber, because I've not, because if it was to fail, I've still got the building. I've developed pro properties before. I can still develop it into four two-bedroom flats. I'm in the furniture and carpet business. I can make it into a furniture and carpet unit. So Alex comes to this with his eyes wide open. He's got a number of strategies to make sure he comes out on top, but first and foremost, he wants the boxing gym to succeed. What will be your dream for Well, it? my dream straight away is I'm a realist and I never say I'm going to do this, that and next thing. And everything I say, I do. I said I was going to run five marathons for children with leukaemia and I'd done my last one in New York last year and I raised £20,000 for children with leukaemia, right? The fact that I've got two friends that are already been world champions going to be part of this. Oh, wow. So, in 20 years, I'd like a world champion and in two years, I'd like a British champion and next year, I want a Scottish champion. Well, listen, it's fantastic what you're doing. Congratulations. We can't wait to see how you go. It's been great to meet you. <laughs> you too. Thanks.